since I started out as a prosecutor in New York City, Africa was the way to go. I'm Vanessa Canby and I'm here with Nana Amwaka Anin and she is the founder of Bliss yoga in Accra. Honestly, I have been working with you now <laughs> for weeks, like one-on-one -on -one yoga, and it's been amazing. So oh I'm like, gosh. I have to share this with everybody. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank um, you so much. So where were you born and raised? So I was born in the U.S. My parents are from Ghana originally, but I was born in the U.S. and they're retired. So they worked for the World Bank and the U.N. most of their lives. And they're, so they've been sort of bringing us back and forth. And I was living here I've lived here for eight years, but was coming here every summer as a young woman and a child with my parents. So it's sort of been home away from home, but then I relocated with my husband and our daughter like eight years ago. Oh, so, amazing. Yes. Whereabouts in America were you born and um, I was born in the D.C. area, and I went to school there, but I ended up in New York City for college. And then I went to back to D.C. Um, to license as a lawyer, actually, and then ended up in New York and cruise to Ghana. <laughs> so, so did you practice law? Yes, I did. I practiced law in the U.S. I started out as a prosecutor, as a prosecutor in New York City. Um, after graduating from law school, always wanting to be a people lawyer, um, I decided to go into a more of a victim representer. And so I went in as a prosecutor and I worked on trials for women in domestic violence and children related cases. Yoga was always a base for all the stress I was under and I continued that until licensing to become a teacher and then deciding that Africa was the way to go and my husband and I, after we had my daughter, decided it's time. <laughs> yeah. Wow, so that is such a change Huge. from a prosecutor in New York <laughs> City yes. to being on this rooftop, just the air coming through yes. and practicing and teaching and um, doing yoga. So how was that experience being a prosecutor in New York City? I think that every person who wants to be a lawyer would want to work in that space. I think the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, which is the number one DA's office in the country, is the most sought after lawyerly job in the world. And being like one of a thousand applications and being one of 70 class of it was a dream job mm -hmm. however it was a trial job however it was I was only third of 70 people who were of color in my group or my class wow. so there's a lot that has to be said about what stress I really was under given that most of the work I did in the cases I worked with were people of color um, and there was a lot that had the questions I had to ask about the work and why. And so mm -hmm. transitioned out of that, but found it to be so honorable mm -hmm. to be a victim's lawyer. I'm sure you were probably making like good money. So maybe it was, was it difficult for you to make that transition from law to yoga? Um, I think that the difficulty is, is not really learning that life is happening. Are you really present in your work? And I think being somebody who was a high performer, it made a lot of sense to stay there. But when you have challenges like insomnia, um, weight loss, um, stress-related disorders, nightmares, you have a lot of things happening to you that are in your stimulus that are stressful, you're not really living. So it was actually a pretty easy choice to transition and mold my lifestyle to offer services like this that could make other people well and could also help me. What point did you decide, okay, we're leaving New York? <laughs> like, people dream of living in yes, New York. No, so many of my totally. friends are like, oh, they want to live in New York. Yes. Um, for me, it's actually too busy because like, I just can't deal with different places. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is an amazing place. Yeah. And then to come to Accra yes. and Ghana. I think that, you know, yes, everyone wants to live in New York. And we lived in like Park Slope and this really cool two bedroom apartment, which is a big deal for being in Brooklyn. And um, it was becoming too small. You know, our daughter was one, she was walking. She couldn't go outside after six. We couldn't go to the park at night. You know, we, there was always her looking out the window and there was no space. And so it was really a decision about our lifestyle. Like we wanted to be free, like look at us. We're outside in the middle of a weekend, free, open. Um, it's, it's about that. So it was really about life and sight. We couldn't really see anymore. We couldn't see too far in front of us. So 
it felt like an easy choice and I love adventure you know mm -hmm. of my family I'm the one that's always traveling and I just love the idea that I could make something up again I could do something new again and my daughter could see that mm -hmm. right that bravery and that excellence at the same time Oh, nice. Yeah. Sounds so great. I'm the same. I'm like, I love just like taking, it's like you're on one path, it's like skirt. <laughs> <laughs> Completely different direction. Um, and so was your husband on the same journey with you? Did he also want to come here or did, was there convincing to be done? Well, he was sort of on the leaderboard because uh, being from Ghana as well originally, but having gone to college, high school, excuse me, in Ghana and then going back to the US, he always knew like in the back of his head, like in his heart, like, Africa. like we need to go home let's take what we have and just build right so we actually he was the one who started helping us build our house and that's what was the big impetus around let's go home and let's let's have a like a love legacy you know let's bring our daughter to see her country right and um, he was the first catalyst and I didn't take a lot of convincing you know because I was like I love adventure and he just made it happen and what was the house building journey like? Oh, the house building journey was completely humbling. I mean, it's literally brick to brick to brick. And my husband used to tell me like, it's just step by step by step. Like you build a foundation then you build a wall then you build and then you get to the roof. So I think you have to be really patient and building here on African soil teaches you that it's just about the elements. And it was a struggle a lot. We struggled, you know, we struggled with time and, and delays but it made us so stronger because it's our house. Mm -hmm. Every detail about it is ours. Oh, that is yeah. so nice. I mean, it's my ultimate dream, as you yes, know, to I build know. my own house. Yes. Um, and patience is something that I'm having to practice yes. right now. Yes. Um, but to see that you've done it mm -hmm. definitely gives me inspiration. Yes. I can also do it at some point. Building your um, company, Bliss Yoga, when did that happen? That happened pretty soon after I arrived as a lawyer, and most of my students were lawyers who I was teaching privately at home at places and I had brought a lot of equipment with me and so what happened was I was driving around a crowd with like sneakers yoga mats blocks in the back of my car at the moving pick with a friend who was a yogi and a lawyer and amazing woman and a space was downstairs and the GM was like hey you know we see you yoga girl would you like to rent a unit and I was like what you know a yoga studio and so through a lot of heart searching i decided that yes why not and so i rented a space and it was three months in it was a few students and then three months later in december we had to break down a wall and expand and double the space because we couldn't fit as many people anymore and it, then it became a business Whoa. so it was an accidental love affair of like being in the space knowing that you love the practice and then deciding that you wanted to become an entrepreneur essentially mm -hmm. yeah and where is the business at now like where can people come to practice yoga and what do you offer yes um, we offer services group yoga classes private yoga classes yoga teacher training a 200 hour yoga line program that's been going on for about eight years we've graduated about a hundred teachers in eight years we are now currently at one airport square which is in the airport area at this amazing rooftop and we've just been going and we feel that it's not really where you are because we've moved into different spaces over the years and with the pandemic we've had to change and adapt but the community keeps coming mm. and we started with a few students and over eight years we've, we've had about a membership base of about 900 throughout the world wow. coming and going and supporting us amazing yeah. and another thing that I've loved about our one-to-one -one sessions mm -hmm. is like you as a person are so amazing and like just talking it's almost like talking therapy and um, so what is it that you do in that space as well yes um, I I spend a lot more the majority of my time as a matured as a practitioner to offer one-on-one -on -one time but not just one-on-one -on -one physical classes one-on-one -on -one life work where I infuse coaching and counsel on energy um, related to depression mothering postnatal um, anything life related I'm really working within the scope of mind and body connection together so I do a lot of sessions that way now more where it's not just physical practice we get to talk mm -hmm. <laughs> and do you do it for people around the world or you just do it face to face like let's say somebody was sitting I don't know where in America in the UK and yeah. they're like oh I'd love to work with you can you definitely virtual I think actually you know with yoga we it's changed we no longer are just 
brick and mortar. So we've adapted and I personally do a ton of my, especially my one-on-ones virtually. I have clients in Singapore, I have clients in Washington DC, I have clients in the Philippines, I have clients in different countries and even also additionally in, within Africa that we work virtually mm-hmm. with. So I think it's amazing. Oh, that's so yeah. exciting. Yeah, everyone should definitely come and practice whether on this rooftop or one-to-one so the move from america to ghana this part of the video is sponsored by nordvpn one thing i love about going to the airport is the free wi-fi but when you go into wi-fi there's all different wi-fi's coming up some of them are open and you might think perfect i'm just going to click on that one but let me have you know that there is cybersecurity threats everywhere and You might think you're going into the airport Wi-Fi, but it's not really the airport Wi-Fi. And there's this man in the middle attack, which is somebody else has created a Wi-Fi. You click on it and now everything you input goes to them. So you're logging into your bank, they get your bank details. You're logging to your social media, all of a sudden your social media gets hacked. So when you're looking for a Wi-Fi to connect to, always look for the little lock button and use an HTTP. If you want 100% protection, you can use NordVPN. NordVPN is a virtual private network and basically that hides your identity, meaning that if you do end up clicking on one of these random Wi-Fis, they can't get your information. You can actually use NordVPN over several devices and I also use it to watch shows in other countries. So you can change the location of where it shows that you are in the world. Go to the link in the description, nordvpn.com forward slash Vanessa to get your two year plan plus four months free and just head down there into the description. Yeah. So many people are thinking about it. Do you have any advice for them? I think the one advice I'd say is um, when I moved, I remember a, a, somebody I worked with when they found that I was leaving, were like, you're willing to s- leave everything that you've built, move to another country and start from scratch. And I think that what I would say to anybody is you really have to be intentional about why you're coming. Are you coming because it's just a temporary idea or do you really want to make a change? Is it, is it, is it really, what's important to you in the move? And also planning. You really have to think at least two to three years ahead about like where your finances are or what job you're going to have, um, where you're going to live. And there's so many resources now um, about what to do in Ghana, Vanessa, oh, right? <laughs> and where to, you know where to function and how to function and have a great time and have a great lifestyle. But you need to also be connecting with people who are already here mm-hmm. to ask those important questions before you come. It's always about people ahead of you that can help your situation when you arrive, right? And was there any challenges that you came across that you didn't think you would come across? I guess also you have the connection here. Yes. But was there anything that, you know, you can bring light to for other people that, so that they might not make the same? Yes. Um, I think that there are things that have sort of made it challenging to live in Ghana or come to Ghana. The first thing I would say is that um, you have to be able to be like raw. Like you have to understand that things don't always work. You have to understand that maybe you're at home and your lights go out, you know, and that your water won't run and that you need to order water, bring in uh, the, the resources you have. You have to be flexible, mm-hmm. that it's not always the same. And you have to be a little bit, get comfortable with being graciously disappointed, you know, with hiccups, you know, that the repairman didn't come that day, but he's coming tomorrow. Like it gives you living in, I, I say that living in Ghana makes you live. You understand that there's so many parts of living. It makes you more appreciate the authenticity of just being on the ground. Yeah, no, yes. it's so true. Like, yes. I mean, I go through these water and electricity things all the time. Yes. And when I was living in the UK, I was just there. Everything was working mm-hmm. um, in terms of electricity and water. And you didn't have to think about it. But yeah, as you say, like you actually have to think about how the water actually gets to your house. Yes. And mm-hmm. how the electricity is getting there. Yes. And it does make you connect with the real world yes these things aren't just coming from nowhere yes exactly you actually might have to sort out yourself we almost speak vanessa us being in ghana and us relocating it's almost like we become pioneers of life we're like on the pioneer trail in our horse-drawn carriages arriving setting up tents camp it's that same conference it's the modern scope of it but you have to be flexible Mm -hmm. you have to have sense of adventure you have to be brave about newness Mm -hmm. right 
And is there anything you miss about living in New York? Wow, I love New York City. I love, um, I love the di the diversity of the city, the mm -hmm. people that you're on the train and there's somebody break dancing. That you're on the train and you see a ballet dancer. That you're on the train and you could be anybody. But guess what? I don't miss it as much because I can be anyone here too. I have become somebody else and still, you know, have other practice and still are able to delve into my old career work. But I've actually been able to reinvent myself. Um, but what do I miss? I miss walking into the corner store, but then I have like oh, yeah. the corner store in Ghana. I miss being at the MoMA or being at the Met or being at the Guggenheim. Mm -hmm. But now I have an older residency program to go visit. I see that Africa is planting um, and I can always go back mm -hmm. and visit. Yeah, no, that's But I want to be here. That's one thing I also miss, just like walking to the shop. Yes. Honestly, it sounds like yes. and when I when I lived in the UK, I never thought, oh, this is mm -hmm. such a privilege to walk to the shop. But now when you can't sometimes walk to the shop, it's mm -hmm. like, oh, you know, it's quite nice to just have, but those things will come, yes. you know, mm -hmm. and here. And there is shops, obviously, just might not be paved to get there. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I'm just so excited that you have been having this conversation as a woman as an African woman and a wellness practitioner in Africa, I think that our stories need to be more told. And I think that representation in yoga particularly has been always a question, it's always been a scope that we need to speak more about. The fact that the question of like, who's in the space? Are we, is it available to us? Can we claim it? You know, the concept of that. And so it's just really exciting that I get to be a voice and a representation about what wellness looks like as well. Yeah. That we are here and that we um, we are, we are we, there's equanimity in what we do as well and it should be celebrated and honored. Mm -hmm. And that's why I continue to believe that Bliss Yoga Accra should be, exists for community experience for that reason. We live in Accra in Ghana. It's a predominantly Christian society. It's also Muslim as well, but do you ever have people that ask you about, you know, Christianity and yoga? Do they go together? Can you be a Christian and can you do yoga as well? Yes. I think when we first opened the studio, we had many calls about this. And we actually had to sort of have a script that we could share, the information. And just the sense is that yoga has existed for over 10,000 years. And there's been a whole conversation about it as a practice coming from Africa with African Medic Yoga, where they saw evidence of it on the pyramids and paintings and also in India 5,000 years ago where we have much documented evidence and beautiful storytelling and scripture about yoga so people associate the practice with a faith and maybe make the assumption as when we were opening that it is a religion or that you do have to give up what you believe in to come to be here and I think that that's a position that we can dis dissolve in the sense that it's you. When you practice yoga, it's your it's about your body and your mind. And the teachers or the studios are offering, offering a practice. And I think that for us, we can claim to say that Ghana has changed. And many Ghanaians who have practiced Christianity and are have been more confused about if they could come, we have seen a dramatic shift in that, that they feel comfortable understanding that they don't have to disown, disclaim, or leave their faith behind. Because people from all different types of religions come to our studio classes all the time for years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a very important question. Yeah. <laughs> really, I just think it's so exciting that um, two women of color are having this conversation because um, the face of wellness they, we consider we consider wellness to be a luxury business or luxury opportunity globally that many people can access, right? And it's really important to be the voice for um, wellness in that space, that conversation around who is here, and what, mm -hmm. why are we doing it, and um, who is being here. People feel that it's accessible. Seeing us, people, the, us, people who look like us feel they are accepted, they're seen, they're heard, they can come. And that's why our classes have become so beautiful and mm -hmm. everyone from all over comes because everyone feels welcome. And so I'm just excited that um, I get to speak with you on yours in your spaces. It's exciting. I'm also so grateful to like the time that we spent together like practicing. It's just been so great. And like you as a person, you just 
so nice. Like, you know, I just <laughs> love spending the time with you and stuff. So one other thing is, you know, you were talking about you think Africa's the future. Yes. Where do you kind of see Ghana going? And also, you've been here for eight years. Yes. What has changed in oh that my time? Gosh. I mean, I still remember getting here in Accra Mall was like, it was still like this little circle. And now it's like this vast enclave of different shops and different road connections. And there's, you know, home recreational, like family recreational spaces. And there's adventure travel. And there's, you know, amazing Zena and Senchis that have been growing their, their, their communities of travel um, and the, uh, tourists coming. I think that we, and you know that Ghana is one of the most expensive places to live in yeah, the world. It's it in is. the top 10 and it's mm -hmm. also, so it shows us that, again, I always just say this, that Africa is elevated. You know, that it's no longer they are looking at us. We are looking at them. Mm -hmm. And so I think in the, in the future, Ghana, particularly West Africa, continues to see even post pandemic within pandemic, people are still moving here, right? There's so much, um, and I see the creative scenes developing, the art scenes developing, the music scene, um, the construction scene, you know, things are still being built. This is a, a metropolis of um, opportunity. And yeah. what do you like most about living here, apart from those things, you know, like day to day? Day to day, I love that I, they call my house the pineapple house because oh. we have, like, we're always just like, <laughs> you know, oh, and pineapple, pineapple doesn't taste as, it tastes better here than in New York, right? Yeah. It's like sour, right? So the fact that we're able to like naturally live, you know, whatever that means, get access to things that are considered, um, people will spend a whole year planning a trip to Ghana to come to sit at a hotel and have a certain meal. When we can just get in a, get in a car and go to the beach right mm -hmm. now and experience what somebody planned a three year trip three-year plan to bring their family we do that we could do that every day yeah so I, I think that's what I love that I'm actually experiencing everything that people dream about um, on a daily basis on a daily basis oh yeah well, thanks so much Nana You're for welcome. sitting with me and for all the times we've spent like practicing and I'm sure you know we'll continue and anyone coming to Accra should definitely check out Bliss Yoga Accra on Instagram their website you can send an email if you want to practice with them or do one-to-one -one or sort of like life coaching things with you directly yeah. i'll put everything in the description below and yeah thanks again i really appreciate it you're welcome and i'll see you soon, see you soon. Bye. 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 <laughs> thanks so much for watching and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and press the bell if you like this video if you know anybody that's into yoga or is considering moving from america to ghana definitely share this video with them